I have a new leaf and it's got the little, there's like a special word for it. I'll show it in the atmosphere, but it's got those. Hey, we out here. He's doing the thing. Ooh. Hey everyone, it's me, Hoise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, if you're new here, I make videos about my chaotic good life. Subscribe, follow, social media, all the things. Y'all know, y'all know. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a few plants that I think that are actually really easy to have in LECA and manage in LECA. Um, I'm still very new to semi-hydroponics, also known as LECA, also known as, what else do they call it? Passive hydro, that's another one I've seen. People say passive hydro a lot, keyword. But a few plants that I've switched over seem to be doing really well and seem to just kind of take to the system in general. So I wanted to kind of show those to you now. So that way, if you're someone who's thinking about switching to LECA, but are a little nervous about it or something like that, check these out, see how you do. So the first plant I would say that is pretty easy to grow in LECA is the Monstera. I'm saying it right now. Aren't y'all proud? This one is actually the one I used to film a previous video where I talk about the basics of semi-hydroponics. This one was originally in a glass jar, or it was like a glass vase. Ta-da! <laughs> I was able to get this out of the vase without breaking it, as you can see, uh, because it did end up taking off in LECA to the max. This one was actually a propagation that I had. So I had clipped it from a monster that I saw out on the river and I just clipped this little bit off and started growing it at home and propagating it at home. I waited about two months, three months. Eh, no, that's too much. I waited about two months of propagating it just in water, making sure that its roots really grew. Every now and then I would give it a little bit of super thrive in the water too. And then once I felt like it was good, I switched it over to LECA and I filmed that video. If you're someone who's new to semi-hydro, you have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Check out that video if you want. Um, I also built a whole editing class around that video too. <laughs> randomly, where I actually give you the footage and teach you how to edit in Premiere Pro. So if you're curious about that, link will be in the description box. Um, I know some of y'all are thinking about becoming content creators, YouTubers, and stuff like that, and you have a good camera, you know how to film yourself, but you're not really good with the editing bit yet, and so I put that class together for that. Other classes that I've seen that teach what I teach in it charge like two, three hundred dollars, something crazy. Um, I just charge 60 bucks. <laughs> so. Hopefully that helps y'all out if you wanna start learning how to create content online. Back to the Monstera. This one is the one that I propagated um, in that video for y'all to see. And as, as you can see, it's doing really well. I have a new leaf and it's got the little, there's like a special word for it. I'll show it in the atmosphere, but it's got those. Hey, we out here, he's doing the thing. Ooh, I actually have three of these. <laughs> so I have this first one. And then my neighbor actually gave me another one that I'm currently propagating in water. And as you can see, look, beauty guru. <laughs> as you can see, it's doing really well. Um, I have revived him, he's doing really well. And he's just in water in this little Samjang container for now, Samjang. And he's already given me another new leaf. Um, it's probably gonna be a while for this one, before this one gets what are the, the word, the word, y'all know what I'm talking about, that word with the things. This is gonna be a while before this one gets that because he's still, still a young blood, but as you can see, he's just from a clipping and he's doing really well. And I'm gonna put this one in LECA too. And then my third one, I have, like I said, I have three Monsteras, is this little guy. Um, I got this one at a farmer's market for $10 and as you can see, I made a grave mistake, but I was so excited when this one put out a new leaf that I tried to unravel it to see if it would have the little guys, the little lines, you know, little breaks. And when I did that, I, I did that too soon. This leaf was very young and I did that too soon and it ended up getting crispy because yeah, and like the leaf isn't even fully formed really all the way. But it ended up getting crisped because I did that, tried to roll it back up, and then left it in a place where it got way too much sun, and so that happened. But other than that, this guy is alive, he's doing well, he's fine. This one isn't a propagation. I took it straight from the little, uh, you know, nursery pot that it came in and put it right into LECA and 
it was fine. What I've seen so far with the plants that I've put into LECA, that if you can propagate a plant in water first, they really seem to take to LECA a lot well. Something about propagating them in water seems to work really well. I think it's because when you propagate in water, you get these really, really epic, strong, thick roots like this, and that really seems to help them do well in the system because usually with plants that I see that are growing in soil, um, the roots are like really, really paper thin. Like they're so thin, they're so fragile. Um, I don't know if it's just because they're in soil so they're just like, eh, we're doing whatever. Plants that seem to get propagated in water or you know, started in water, they seem to do really well because they have these super awesome thick roots that you want, it seems, in LECA from what my limited experience has shown me. The second plant I would say are philodendrons. These seem to do really, really well in LECA as well. This was one of the first plants I ever switched over to LECA. Again, I was out in the world, out in the atmosphere, and <laughs> found a philodendron that was super big and epic, and I saw that it had sprouted out another little guy, and I was like, oh, that's my cue, and I went over and carefully broke it off, brought it back home, and have been pro I had been propagating this one for, again, one, two months before I finally switched it over to LECA. And as you can see, Marble Nuggets, that's its name, Marble Nuggets, has grown so much. All of these roots in here doing really well. And as you can see, I officially have a new leaf from this philodendron as well. It just popped out and it looks like I have two more that are maybe thinking about making an appearance as well. So. It took a while. I will say with this one, it was in LECA for a while before I finally got this new leaf. It seemed to be doing really well and just like growing and growing and growing, but no new leaves were happening or anything like that. And then now, you know, I think this new leaf popped up maybe last week, week before last, and now it looks like there's more. And so now it's finally deciding like, okay, I'm ready to put leaves out. Now that I've set root, if you will, I'm ready to put leaves out. So I would say with philodendrons, if you are going to switch this one over to LECA, don't freak out if you don't necessarily see that a new leaf has come up or anything like that. Give it some time to get used to the system. I would also say that whenever you have the opportunity, and this is another pro tip, I would say, well, not pro, I'm not a pro. Look at me, I ain't no pro. Um, amateur tip, <laughs> here's another amateur tip for you. If you're someone who's just really concerned that you might be messing up or um, doing something wrong, try to use clear containers so that way you can really see if maybe root rot has set in or if something's just not looking right, you can actually see because the container is clear. That's why I really like doing the upcycle thing and taking containers that are plastic and stuff and not throwing them in the landfill and using them. So that way I can really see what's going on in the plant and really get an eye on the roots. Yes, that does make you a little bit more susceptible to algae buildup and things like that, but for me it feels worth it because I am still very new at this and I just wanna make sure that what I'm doing is okay. Third plant that I think is good are pothos. Pothos in general are really easy plants. They're so easy. Like they kind of want you to forget them. So this, I have four. Yeah, now I have four. I have four pothos. They're all in LECA and this one, actually I give this one some water, oops. But they're all in LECA, different types of jars that I've used to put them in LECA and they're really, really easy. Um, they seem to really have taken well to the system. Oh my gosh, there's already like new roots popping out from the top. That's new, I, those weren't there before. But they really seem to love it. I think these longer ones, I think they're all, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, y'all. I'm pretty sure both of these are golden pothos, which y'all had helped me with before. And then I think these, my kind of shorter ones, these are golden pothoses as well and as you can see, they're just doing pretty well. This one's a little crispy because I actually re revived this one. So both of these, both of these pothoses were in a pothi, pothos, pothi, is that a thing? Anyway, both of these were in another plant. I had gotten a giant dracaena from Home Depot and in it they put these little pothos pods in the bottom just to make it look cute or whatever. But the way they did that, the pothos were not getting enough water. It was like struggle blast with these guys. And so I just took them out and put them in LECA. 
And first I had to revive this one because it really was so dry and crispy that it almost didn't make it. And I had to literally just put it in water for a couple of days and then it slowly opened back up. And then after that, I dried it off to make sure it wouldn't get any root rot and threw it in LECA and it's doing great. You can kind of see some of the roots peeking out. I've had to adjust it a few times to make sure because I put it too far down into the LECA and it was getting a little too wet. Um, that's another amateur tip. Something that I struggle with is making sure that the plant placement in relation to the water is good. So you don't wanna put your plant's roots too far down to where it's always kind of sitting in the water reservoir that you have. You know, so you want it to be about a third water of whatever vessel you're using. Have there be some space between where the plant, you know where the, about where the plant's roots are and where the water begins. You should have some gap in there. I know it feels counterintuitive because you're just like, but there, how is it getting water? What's happening? But for whatever reason, you can you should not put the roots straight into the water or have it be that low, because that's a surefire way to get root rot. And then you're like, no, my plants, oh, root rot. Oh. As you can see, this one is doing a lot better because I, I originally put the placement of this plant like in a really good spot. Um, the water only comes up to about here when, I, when it is completely full. And then when I first put it in, there was about this much space in between where the roots began. And then it was just, you know, plant from here on up. Now I'll do a close up. You can see that this plant has actually made its way down to the water and those roots can handle being wet all the time. So keep that in mind when you are doing this. Final bonus plant, I know I said three, but I'm gonna do four, maybe five. Final bonus plant that I would say is snake plants. Snake plants are really, really easy to grow in LECA. Snake plants are just another really easy plant in general. This one's named Shobani. And they just, they just chill. As long as they're getting, you know, even a minute bit of water, they're completely fine. They just, they're, these are so easy, y'all. These are easy whether you're doing LECA or not. Snake plants, all the way. I have two, I have a super big one over there. Still in, still in soil, um, probably gonna switch them over. Trying to wait for them to dry out a little bit. It's easier to switch plants to LECA when they dry out some. Final one I would say that's super easy to put into LECA is Hoyas. Um, this is a, y'all corrected me in, a, in a, another video. This is a Hoya Crimson Queen. I think I said crown in the last video. Queen. <laughs> is a Hoya Crimson Queen. Um, that I got from my neighbor. They're, one of my neighbors is an epic plant person. Like they're, they're advanced. They're an advanced plant person. <laughs> I'm a novice. They are a super advanced plant person and they gave me this Hoya, Crimson Queen. And this is another plant that I, one of the first plants I put into LECA and really boosted my confidence in the process because Hoyas really seem to lend themselves well to this system. I would almost venture to say that most Hoyas will probably do really well in LECA. Um, because they just, I know they're, they're like semi-succulent or something like that, I don't even know. Like I said, I'm a novice. Talk about it amongst in the comments. But they seem to do really, really well in LECA. Um, and this one was actually giving me some decent red leaves. Yeah, here's one, well it's not red anymore, it's white now. But there's one, here's another one. And then I had recently readjusted it and it was about to give me a red leaf, but because I readjusted it wrong, again, placement of the roots matters, that red leaf fell off and died. And I was like, whoop, that's a sign, did it wrong. And <laughs> I adjusted it accordingly and now it seems to be doing, doing better again. And I'm kind of waiting for a new leaf to pop up for me to for sure know that like, okay, I didn't mess it up too bad. Those are a few plants that are easy to grow in LECA. If you're thinking about trying this system out, I know a few of y'all had watched and y'all are just like plant lovers in general and you had never really heard of this system or anything like that. Um, like I said, I'm still hardcore beginner. You know what I'm saying? I still am experimenting, figuring things out, trying new things and kind of just chilling with what I have plant wise. Not, I'm gonna attempt to not get any more, I think. I think the, my apartment is maxed out on plant space unless I start hanging stuff from the ceiling, so we're good. <laughs> in the comments below, if you are more experienced than myself in semi-hydro, passive hydro, um, and you have other plants that you would recommend that are super easy to switch over to LECA or start in LECA, let us know so that way people that who are interested in trying this and getting into it can, you know, kind of 
baby step into it in a safe way and, and not mess up too many plants in the process. Big shout out and thank you to my Patreon producers, patreon.com slash Halise if you are interested. There you get early access to videos as well as private weekly vlogs from me and I also talk about different aspects of running a production company. A lot of y'all in previous plant videos have commented on my production value. That is directly because of the Patreon. I am able to maintain my gear and equipment and doing what I do. So patreon.com slash Halise if you're interested. And once again, thank you to my Patreon producers. Y'all are the best. I appreciate you so much. Again, I'm Halise. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you when I see you.